Alright, this video is going to be about Giffen goods, that elusive good that doesn't really exist in the real world, but for some reason, economics instructors around the world like to ask questions about it. So basically, a Giffen good results in an upward sloping demand curve, which violates our law of demand, which says that demand has to be downward sloping. The curious thing about a Giffen good is that the demand curve isn't always upward sloping. At some point, it has to be downward sloping as well. So a good can be a Giffen good over a range of the demand curve, but not through the whole demand curve. So what makes a Giffen good? First, the good has to be inferior, which means that as income goes up, we want to buy less of the good. So an example here could be top ramen or potatoes or something very cheap that we really don't want to buy, but because we're poor, we buy to sustain ourselves. So the good has to be inferior and the consumer has to have a low income. So they don't have a choice as to whether they can buy that good or not. Okay, so what makes the Giffen good inferior, or what makes the gif, what makes the good a Giffen good, is that it's inferior. So income goes down, say consumption will go up. So when the price of a good goes up, that's similar to income going down because we're now spending more on that good. So it's like our income is going down. That's called the income effect. And so that's one of the effects that makes up the slope of the demand curve. The second is the substitution effect. So when the price of a good goes up, the income effect, depending on whether it's normal or inferior, will have a positive or negative effect on how much we buy. Since the good's inferior, price going up has a positive effect on how much we buy. The substitution effect is always negative. These here are assuming price goes up. So the income effect is positive because it's inferior. The substitution effect is always negative. So what makes it a Giffen good and upward sloping is that the income effect is greater than the substitution effect. So the income effect is positive, say 5. Substitution effect is negative, say 4. So 5 minus 4 is 1, which means that as price goes up, we actually consume more of the good. So the income effect dominates the substitution effect. Now what happens at this price level right here? This price and quantity show our entire budget going to this Giffen good. So say it's top ramen. And when top ramen is cheap, you can buy a lot of it and use the money you save to buy hamburger or steak. But as the price of top ramen goes up, you have to give up some of that steak or hamburger to buy more top ramen so you don't die. At some point, you're spending all of your money on top ramen. So as the price of top ramen keeps going up, you can afford to buy less and less of that good. So then the good here starts to have our normal downward sloping demand curve. However, along this range right here, it's a Giffen good. And along this range, the income effect is dominating the substitution effect. I'll do a more advanced video later on showing indifference curves and budget constraints, but this is kind of a basic video uh, explaining what a Giffen good is and how we get to it.